Conception Church. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Daniel Velasco. At this time, if you would take a moment to turn off your cell phone or any device that might be a distraction from the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In today's readings, we are reminded that the gifts of the Holy Spirit are not restricted to only a specific group or a specific elite, but it is open and available to all who believe in Jesus. Today's Mass is offered for the personal intentions of all the parishioners. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. Showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the crowd and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the seventy elders, and as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Adad and the other Medad, 
were not in the gathering, but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list, but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets? Would the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all? The word of the Lord. The responsorial song, The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. Through your servant is careful of them, very diligent in keeping them. Yet who can detect failings? Cleanse me from my unknown faults. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. From wanton sin especially restrain your servant. Let it not rule over me. Then shall I be blameless and innocent of serious sin. The precepts of the Lord give joy to the heart. Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away, your clothes have become moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded, and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up pleasure for the last days, Behold, the wages you withheld from your workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, amen I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great milestone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes your sin, cut it off. 
It is better for you to enter into the life main than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into the life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna, where their, where their worms do not die, but the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. stories about the apostles, the narratives that feature St. Peter are probably best remembered. After all, Peter is the brave one who attempts to walk on water. Also, Peter was the apostle that Jesus invites to tend his ship. And we can even visualize the feelings of Peter as he denied Jesus three times. Subsequently, when we think about John the Apostle, the stories we might recall of him may be when he is referred as the disciple whom Jesus loved. We may remember that John was also with Jesus at the Transfiguration on Mount Tabor. And even if we don't remember those two stories, we for sure remember when Jesus entrusted Mary to John. Behold your mother, and woman, behold your son. Stories that make, make us consider that, that John was the perfect apostle until we read today's gospel passage. In today's narrative, we hear how John reports to Jesus that a person was driving out demons in Jesus' name. We can also see his face saying, how can he do that? How does he dare to do that? John also informs Jesus that they tried to prevent him from doing so because that person was not a member of their community and therefore should not be allowed to cast out demons in Jesus' name. This brief exchange allows us to see that John was not exempt from failings. John had moments in which his zeal for the mission of Christ did not allow him to be open to the good that could be done outside the band of twelve. And of course I want to be careful with my examples. I'm not criticizing the actions of St. John. He's a saint and I'm not. Or I want to highlight his shortcomings. I simply wants us to consider what might appear to be faults or deficiency, deficiencies to the world. In reality, these actions did nothing to limit or restrict John from enjoying a close relationship with Jesus. Jesus invites John to be open to the people outside their community. Those who could seem as of outsiders were indeed able to perform good deeds, including casting out demons in the name of Jesus. The apostles did not have a monopoly on the power that comes from the name of Jesus, but rather, Jesus' name has power for those who, through faith, call upon him. And they have the power to, good, to do good for all. Jesus reminds John, anyone who is not against us is for us. In our personal lives, we have probably experienced jealousy more than a few times. It may have been jealousy because we did not like when others enjoyed the things they had because we didn't have them. It may have been in the form of resentment because of the talents other people's had, and we did not. 
He may have been in the form, in the form of resentment because of the talents. And as we heard today, it may be that we cannot see how God can work through others who might not share the same spirituality, the same seal for the faith that we do. Some of us may prefer specific forms of prayer or may have preference for a particular devotion. Others may share a specific taste for music within Mass, while others may prefer meditation in silence. Regardless of our preference, we need to see the good in each other's relationship with God. Each one of us has our own unique way in which we relate, in which we pray to God. We have developed our relationship with God through our personal experiences, through the times that our faith has been challenged, and through the knowledge we have gained about God. We have come to know God in a specific and personal way. And the same truth applies to our brothers and sisters, their upbringing, their personal experiences, and how they have encountered God's presence all shape their relationship with God. It is not about whether our bond with God is closer or better than the relationship others have with God. For example, John had his own unique relationship with Jesus, different than Peter or James or any of the other twelve. John's relationship with Jesus was even different from the man that he saw casting out demons. Each of them possessed a distinctive and personal relationship with Jesus. And the same happened with the same happens with all of us. Each one of us has come to know and experience God in a unique and personal way. And as Jesus invited John to see the good in others, we're invited to appreciate not only our own relationship with God, but to respect our brothers and sisters' ways to relate to God. Despite our shortcomings and limitations, our relationship is unique. Regardless of the great or small knowledge we have about Jesus, our desire to follow Him is our response to God's grace moving our hearts. John was willing to approach Jesus despite his questions, despite his doubts, and even despite his jealousy. May we learn from the Apostle John to be open to share everything with God, not only to share what we think God wants to hear, but may we open our hearts completely to share even our struggles, our doubts, even our resentments and jealousy. But more importantly, may we learn to listen to God's response, just like John listened and accepted Jesus when he said, anyone who is not against us, is for us. Because it was the grace of listening to Jesus' voice that allowed John later on to accept those beautiful words from Jesus at the foot of the cross. Words that Jesus also shares with us. Son, daughter, behold your mother.
filled with loving compassion and service, we pray to the Lord. That we hold in prayer all members of our faith community, especially those who are unable to join us at Christ's table, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick, especially the Nielsen Law, we pray to the Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellsprings of the blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For he having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raise up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy. You 
are in the Holy o Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending out your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and was more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until we will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church and spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Anthony our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, We may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. With the bath we all reach other side of Christ Jesus.
Lamb of God.
this heavenly mystery, O oh Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co heirs in glory with Christ, to whose sovereign we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for some announcements, please. I see parish picnic and a school for social movie today at Columbus Acres. The gate will open at 3 p.m. There will be a big blessing in honor of the Feast of St. Francis next Saturday, October the 2nd at 9 a.m. at the IC School Field. We hope to see all the doggies, cats, and rabbits, and hopefully not tarantulas or scorpions, but if that's your pet, bring it in a little cage or case, please. I see school after school will be selling pies and muffins, better again. Pies and muffins, but again this year. You may purchase from any IC elementary or preschool student or by calling IC school office. Please place your order by Thursday, October the 7th. All proceeds will support IC elementary and preschool. Please see the bulletin for additional information. And I'm glad to see so many faces today, probably giving thanks that the Razorbacks won last night, because 
attendance yesterday was kind of low, but I'm glad you are here today. Uh, before the final lesson, I want to wish all of you a blessed Sunday and a blessed week. That is the second one. The Lord be with you. And the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.